See, you can see my my hat. This is a wool hat. I really like it. It's good for this kind of weather. It's gray out today. It's not raining, but they're forecasting snow uh, later this week. I'm going to, I think you're a little crooked. I'm going to try turning the camera a little bit. That's probably too much. Let's see if the L today. That's a little bit better. I don't know. Maybe not. But uh, I'm sitting here in my workshop looking at my property or me and my wife's property if you can hear people in the background that's because my uh, boys are over at my uh, father-in-law's house next door about I don't know 50, 50 yards away from my house 75 yards away from my house uh, we ne live next door to each other and um, they're over there helping him with something I went out uh, this is just kind of a daily, weekly update, weekly update. Uh, today I woke up, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't really, I didn't really have any plans except I knew I wanted to do another video, upload it just to kind of keep consistent. Uh, I've been working on stuff that isn't blacksmithing, so I didn't do a video on blacksmithing. Uh, we got a, uh, I think we've got a thing they're saying we're gonna have snow on Monday probably if it sticks and I can see it I mean we're probably it's really overcast like a like it's gonna snow and it's uh it's probably about 48 50 degrees right now uh, I probably I'm gonna go when I get done with this video if I don't blacksmith some in the forge behind me I'll probably go and uh, start a fire Maybe not a big fire, but a little fire in the fireplace just to start taking the chill off the house. And uh, today I took the four-wheeler out. I had uh, I have a little Frankenstein wagon, Frankenstein's monster wagon. It used to be an old one of those old lawnmower wagons that you pull, the red ones that have the dump bed, so you can pull the lever and dump it, and uh, like a little yard wagon. And back when I first got the three-wheeler, I set it up, the bed rotted off, the, the metal rusted away, and I built a wood bed for it. Ever since then, I've used it with the three-wheeler to pull whatever I needed pulling. Well, the four-wheeler, when I got it, the, um, the fenders, the rack on the back of the four-wheeler is sticks out, and the fenders stick out a little bit past that, and the wagon, the hitch, is tucked in under that. So the wagon would come up here and the box on the wagon when I'd turn would hit the corners of the back of the four-wheeler. If you see me wiggling my nose, it's because I must have got in some dust somewhere and I'm trying not to sneeze. I'll get over it. Uh, but anyway, so a couple of days ago, the day before Thanksgiving, I uh, took a piece of leaf spring. I've got fragments of it sitting here on the shop floor where I need to clean them up. And uh, it's probably three eighths of an inch thick. I cut it. Uh, you know, about this long, and I, I took, stripped down the tongue on the old wagon, and uh, C-clamped it on there, and I, well, I, I ground it all, everything out with a tiger pad on the uh, side grinder, uh, just so I could get a good clean weld, and then I welded that sucker, I'm not the best welder, my welds aren't the prettiest, but I welded it up all the way around, and through the bolt holes, and everywhere else, and then I put the, the uh, tongue bracket back on the end of the leaf spring and I drilled through the leaf spring so that my uh, my pen can catch because the tongue on a on these wagons is like a C shape and this piece goes and bends that back down to the to the uh, tongue and the tongue comes up and it's the flat part so the leaf spring came up here well I had a hole in this piece so I just put my drill bit down through it and drilled through the leaf spring so now my pen can go through the tongue and it can swivel around the uh, around the hitch on the back of the four-wheeler so I tested it out a little bit, put the boys in it, rode around and around and around. And it seems to do, be doing pretty good. So uh, today I was going to go out and get some firewood because I have firewood, but I don't have a lot of firewood stored up. Not like I should. 
and uh, the firewood that I have is big rounds, you know, this big around, and they're poplar. And since I cut them uh, in the summer, early summer, late spring, early summer, since I cut them up and stacked them, they have grown a fungus through them. And it's not that they're wet, it's that they're moist. Like the fungus just decided to, it made everything kind of alive again. The fungus is alive in it, and so it doesn't catch real well. It'll burn, it just won't burn as well as something. So I like to burn really dry wood mixed with the split wood from the poplar that's got some fungus in it, and that holds pretty well. Um, I'll get a couple of pieces here in a second. I'm gonna pause this and I'll go get a piece and show you what I went and collected. All right, so I'm back. I'm gonna show you the differences in firewood that I've got this year. I have some hickory too. And the hickory burns really well, and the fungus didn't get in it. And I got it at the same time as I got the poplar. So it must have been something that was in the poplar. This is the poplar. Uh, see how it's spalted? You can see where the bacteria was in it. Uh, see the fungus that grew out of the end of the log on both ends now. That's, I cut that with a chainsaw four months ago, three months ago. And see it's coming through the bark on the fungus. And this burns and it feels dry. It's dry to the touch. It's not wet and it burns, but it doesn't burn that well. The boys walked up. All right, so this feels dry. It's not wet. It just doesn't burn the greatest. So I live on a mountain backed up to timberland. And so the, that's the reason I wanted the trailer available for the uh, four wheeler. Uh, to pull because I can go all the way out hundreds of miles of dirt roads and pick up dead wood along the side of the road all I want. I'll never run out. Trees fall down all the time. So this is dry. The bark has fallen off of it. It was suspended above the ground about two foot. Same with this one. This is from a different tree. Listen. It's got a, it's got a real kind of a glassy sound to it when you clack them together. It's because they're really well seasoned. And those, I don't even have to split them. But if I split them, it's that much better. If I split them, it's more surface area and uh, it burns faster and hotter. And if I throw those three pieces of wood in together, okay, then the, the spongy wood from the, 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 it's not spongy, but the poplar wood with the mushrooms, doesn't burn the greatest but the other two will keep it burning and it'll make for a hot fire and believe it or not I only need for my house about two maybe three loads like that so six maybe uh, nine little pieces of wood to keep my house warm uh, from right now until tomorrow morning uh, the house is well insulated uh, I have a good wood stove I have a blower on the wood stove, so it heats the house. Um, the house is designed so air flows. So the fireplace is in my living, between my living room and kitchen, and I have an open floor plan where the living room and the kitchen are one giant room. It's not giant, one big room, 16 by 24. And um, kitchen's at one end, living room's at the other end. Well, the fireplace is in the middle. And above that, the floor for the upstairs, for the upstairs bedroom, and it has a beam on each side of the fireplace that actually supports the upstairs, and it shows through the ceiling, through the sheetrock. So it, it hangs down four inches, the beam does. And um, four-wheelers. The, um, that serves as a channel the fireplace, the heat rises, my stairwell comes down in that same channel on the far side of the room. So the heat rises, it hits between those two beams and runs upstairs. And so my upstairs stays warm, my living room and kitchen stay warm, my bathroom is kind of cool, my bedroom is kind of cool, my radio room is off of my bedroom, and it's the coolest room in the house. The upstairs is second warmest room in the house, and the living room and kitchen are the first warmest room in the house. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is the way it should be. Because you should want to sit in the living room or sit in the kitchen at, at the table or sit around the wood stove and talk. 
and um, it allows you to have the uh, you know the that congregation point in your house and that's good I, we don't have a TV in the living room we don't have a TV in the kitchen we have a radio in the kitchen but most of our wintertime sitting happens around the fireplace but wood wood heat is um, I've been heating with wood since I was born my parents as far as far back as I can remember have always either had or had periodically wood stoves and fireplaces and so I grew up heating with wood and uh, I've lived in houses that had central heat and air and that's nice and convenient but your electric bill is very high and mine's not I have a very low electric bill I'm gonna switch over to off-grid setup I have solar panels and a battery bank and sooner or later I'll get to the point where I don't need electricity from the outside I have the electricity that I don't want enough that I need and um, I'd like to get to the point where my only bill is a uh, is an internet bill if I want it or a cell phone bill if I want it and that's where I'm almost at except for you know state mandated car insurance <laughs> if you got to pay car insurance you know you've got that bill all the time unless you don't drive and uh, that's not right but uh, Eventually, you know, I'll get to the point where I don't have that much outgo. Uh, but anyway, that's what I was doing today. I was collecting firewood, uh, fed the chickens, you know, did my chores, hung around the house. Um, haven't done much this morning. Uh, probably tomorrow I'll get up. I've got to go and do an estimate. So I'm going to do some odd and end running, a little running around tomorrow, and then I'll probably go and... Uh, I'm I'm looking at blacksmithing. I'm gonna make a uh, I'm gonna make a knife this weekend. Probably I'll get back into it, and make a knife, and uh, I'll try and film some of that. So that'll probably be the next video you see. If not, I've been working on a a video series on my uh, or a video because I'm gonna compile all the clips into a single video on my uh, uh, on my chicken feed. The uh, the way I do the fermented feed done a few little clips but I'll try and do a little bit more than that a little more in depth uh, but anyway uh, short update <laughs> well not really short 12 minutes 45 seconds right now uh, don't be too concerned about the things that are going on outside and the politics and the garbage be concerned about what you prep for uh, stock some food stock some ammunition get in a place where you can Take care of yourself and protect your family. That's what's next. That's the thing that needs to be dealt with. Take steps to immediately remedy security problems. Immediately remedy uh, failings in your supplies. Like today, tomorrow, this week. Go buy food. You know, take extra money, buy food. Uh, even if you're a wealthy person and you don't have any food stored up, all your money in the world can't do anything if we have, uh, you know, the currency go under and or the supply chain fail. So having a, a few a few weeks or even a few months or even a year's worth of food is better than uh, having nothing. Anything's better than nothing. And uh, food's the one thing you know you'll have to have, food and water. So uh, that's that's probably your main priority and security is your second priority. And uh, salvation, of course. Get right with God. But anyway, I'll leave it there.